Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. We are doing a twin EV charge point today. It's going on a post which we're mounting into the ground. We've also got some block paving to lift. We're running steel wire armor cables out to the charge point itself. We've got a sub main from a Dorman Smith board where we had a bit of trouble sourcing an MCCB main switch. We're using a Matty. There is a lot going on in this video and I'm going to try and cover as much of it as I can for you guys to enjoy. Big shout out to Ricky Howell. This is a project he's got within his new job role. He's asked us to come in and help cover some of this off up in the north of England. And of course, we've um, stepped in to happily do so. You know, as soon as Matthew and Nathan heard this was for Rick, they wanted to be involved as well. So yeah, we're going to cover this as best we can. Before we get on with the video, I want to do a quick shout out for Adrian Hackwood. Now, if you aren't already, go and check his channel out on YouTube. It's Hackwood Electrical. Adrian is a proper decent guy. He's on Twitter all the time, joining in the discussion with his fellow electricians. And I've been watching his YouTube channel and there's some great content on there, especially for apprentices, to go and see what it's like as a real world electrician. Um, Adrian's doing a fantastic job getting his YouTube channel up and going. So go show some support. Head over there. I'll pop a little clickable link somewhere up here if I can figure out how to do it again. And yeah, check that one out. But without further ado, let's get on with this video. Let's jump out to site and see exactly what we're up to. So you can see we've got the block paving all out now, it just lifts up. Um, and once you've got started with one block loosened, it all pops out as you need. Take the smallest width possible so you can get a shovel in there and dig out to the depth required. We've used different substrates and electrical warning tape at three different depths. So anybody who's coming into this area to do some landscaping or whatever in the future is going to be well aware that there is electrical buried services in that area. We've come out the building, the main electrical intake is just the other side of that wall. This is the block paving put back. Again, you reverse the process, level the surface off and drop them back in. Make sure you get them nice and tight and then sand in the gaps so that they're not got any possibility of moving. That's how block paving usually works loose and causes you a problem. So don't forget to over sand and reseal. So we've got our cables out now. We've just dropped them up to the top of the soil there so we can dig our hole ready to mount the post. Inside, this is what we've got at the main intake area. It literally backs onto that block paving pathway. You can see we've got a Dorman Smith board. Luckily, there is a spare way. Unluckily, these are very difficult to get hold of. Now, these boards are a little bit interesting. You can see here there's a hole for the SPD. And if you peer inside that hole, you can see all of the live terminals. I'm just going to spin my phone around here and poke it into the hole. But there is live cabling in there. And obviously, there's no access via the use of a tool to get into that. However, this is a locked electrical cupboard. So to me, it's not that much of an issue. Anybody within here who's opening up electrical panels should have knowledge of them. But same principle in that top board. Didn't open it, but there are live terminals in there as well. Now this is the Matty we're going to be installing inside this cupboard. We're going to have to try and find some space. It's a little bit tight, so it's not going to be easy, but we'll get it in there somewhere. We've got our double pole MCBs. We've got our open uh, detection. There's a test switch on there. I've covered the Matty on this channel in a couple of other videos, so I'm not going to go into great detail on that. This is the only real space we've got where we can mount the Matty. You know, if we put it high up in that cupboard, the door's not going to open to get access to it. It's going to be very difficult for someone to come and work on. So we're going to have to shuffle some of those teleco telephone cables around and work around what we've got. You see, we've just jumped this video on a bit now, so we've got the Matty in. Those cables coming in from the charge points, we've run them up the side of that breeze block wall, looped across and into the top of the Matty. These are 10 mil three cars, and they're going out to that post to feed, well, it's essentially the same charge point, but it's got two different 7.4 kilowatt charge points, 7.2 kilowatt charge points out of there. You can see inside the Matty, same as always, we've brought a 16 mil um, sub main down here, so we've run four cars and we've brought a separate earth down to the uh, matty box as well. You can see that running along the bottom. 
And again, we've glanded that into the board using uh, banjo and earth nuts and looped through to the main earth terminal. Our submain is prepped at the side of this board, as far as we can take it for now, because we're waiting on that elusive MCCB. So we're waiting for that to arrive so we can get it in there. But everything's cabled up now. We've tried to work around the existing equipment. I know ideally we want to be keeping away from any of these telephone cables and such and we've made the best job as we can on that we set it off the wall on some unistrut so we are sat in front of any of those cables I'm happy that there's not going to be an interference or um, damaging effects on any of that from these things being installed in that way let me know in the comments if you think I should have approached that differently I've pulled the shroud down on here a bit so you can see the earth lug just onto the bottom of that board that's your main earth bar where everything comes into as well and that's a step back view of the whole install so you can see here we've got it labeled up ready to go I'm still waiting that main switch that's the front cover of the matty and now we've got the lid on I'm not that convinced of these front covers again on this matty board it is one of the things I dislike about this product it's fantastic I love the matty stuff but I think that could definitely be improved it is inside a lot cupboard as I said you can see that there so this is you know essentially an enclosure in itself some would argue and you do need access via the use of a key into the electrical riser cupboard and again just showing you that SPD hole of death if you like I'm not convinced by that but it is what it is so we're now just really waiting to get the power on but let's jump outside and see what we've been up to out there so this is our post we've had to dig down about 800 mil used a lot of postcrete in the hole to make sure we've got it nicely locked in and then obviously backfill the topsoil to make it look like you've never been there in the first place. That's nice and rock solid now. These are actually quite top heavy charge points. You know, they do have some weight to them. So you've got to really ensure you get that post firmly into the ground and that it is secure and level. Everything else falls into place smoothly after that. So our steel wire armor cables essentially run up the middle of this post. And you'll see we've then brought them into the individual single phase charge points on each side and we've used L1 and L3 in this case these are two separate 10 mil steel wire armor cables if you peek through that hole there you can see we've detached from the armorings and we've gone over them with heat shrink so they're not coming into any contact with this charge point at all because obviously we want to ensure the pen fault protection is going to cover the charge point and we're not going to accidentally bypass it this is Matthew with his pride and joy. He really enjoyed digging the hole on this one with Nathan. And you can see there we're ready now for the final groundworks around the charge point and the bay markings to continue. This is the location requested by the client. They wanted it there so it's set back from the road. We're going to have some bump stops as well put in. Full bay marking and a bit of tidying up on the little flower bed in there. You can see again inside the charge point it's got that Eaton uh, main RCD which is lovely. This is the Matty in its little cupboard. And this is the electrical intake again. All together, I think that's come together quite nicely. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Right, so here I am preparing the cable, getting the ends sorted so we can get some lugs on there. And the idea is to do as much prep before you do the shutdown as possible, so you're limiting that time to the lowest possible level. Um, we did this over kind of people's lunch break, but even so, we're taking the whole building off supply, and I want to limit that to... A shorter window as possible so get all the prep done even down to the basics such as getting your lugs sorted so with these boards the mccbs and cage clamps they're lug connections so something we can do before we get started now you can see here i'm just crimping those lugs on and again with these you want to be making sure you're getting good sound and solid connections the lugs are all different you know they some need a double crimp some will work on a single crimp some are bell mouth some are straight in so you need to select your crimping tool based on the lugs you were using they must be compatible with each other otherwise you'll end up with a weak electrical connection and that'll be a pain in the backside you don't want to experience so this one here you can see I've just crimped them up and there is a little window in the end of these lugs if you've not used them before and you need to make sure you can see copper to the end of the tunnel um, and then you get a good crimp onto it um, so you know that that's going to be a sound electrical connection and then pop some heat shrink over just to give it a bit of extra protection and cover over the, the cable ends um, and the lug itself just to give it a little bit of a nicer finish. Some people use tape and there's nothing especially wrong with that, it's just when you use heat shrink you've got a better chance it's going to last a little bit longer. You see this is the panel board, well one of the DBs that needed isolating, so you have to go around the install and isolate all of those before you take the MCCVs out so make sure you're taking all the load off 
and then you can see here I've opened up those MCCBs and that's my lugged connections into the board. That's the board cover back on really. It's as simple as that when you come to, to doing these things. It's a case of just dropping your cables in, obviously with the install off power and then make your terminations. Once we've got to that stage, we now know we've got power in place and we can start to energize these circuits, obviously after dead testing has taken place. Um, and we can get some power out to that charge point and go off and do some testing out there as well and make sure that everything is hunky-dory for people to start charging their vehicles up. So yeah, pretty straightforward. You can see outside here, we've run through the process of testing this charge point. Again, I've shown this lots on my channel. I didn't want to chuck it in with this video again. It just lengthens them beyond the point of interest, I think, now we've seen it that much. But yeah, these are really good chargers, dead easy to install. The commissioning and testing process is really, really straightforward. And um, yeah, that's another one ticked off the list. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that video. We've run through the install. You can see it's actually a pretty comprehensive charge point. There's a lot going on in there. Um, you know, the technology that's involved with these things seems to get better with every generation that's been released by all the various manufacturers. You know, obviously with this one, we had to factor in things like the Mati device because it doesn't have the pen fault detection, but there's some real clever tech in there to do with the 4G and the way it communicates um, as a satellite system. So these can actually be installed in large numbers off a single supply and then they'll share the load around themselves. So they are an effective solution to what can be challenging installs. And in this case, we just got the one in the car park for now. Who knows how that could grow in the future? We've tried to kind of edge our bets a bit with that. So if this was to develop into something a little bit bigger, we have capacity and means and ways of making that happen. If you've got any questions on this video, please drop them in below. Another massive thank you to Ricky again for firing this work over to us. We really do appreciate it. And I hope he, above all else, has enjoyed this video, even if we had to dig a slightly bigger hole than normal. Catch you on the next one.